How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Good. How are you? <laughs> How are you? <clears throat> I think everybody's fine. Jolly good. Is it difficult for you to do what you've just been doing in a tiny television studio? I mean, throwing yourself outwards? Uh, I find singing and performing very easy, but uh, this is awful. <laughs> Never done this before, chat show. No, but I find this very difficult. You, are you nervous? Yes, very. That makes 78 of us. <laughs> Terrified. Have you ever met a man called Fe Federico Fellini? Um, I've only seen his work. Do you know why I'm asking you that question? Why you're asking? Yeah. Because you're going to say that my work is somewhat similar. Are you? No, you're not. <laughs> Can't go out and come in a case every night. No, but you have a very Fellini type face, which is a kind of. You have a strange face, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> do you cult it? Is? Yes, cult it's face. a mask. It is. Yes. You wouldn't like to take it off, would you? I couldn't. I've lived with it so long. I think I'm, it's, it's good. just uh, raw blood and flesh underneath. No. Yeah. You make it sound very painful. Yes. Right. Now, what about the earring? Bit? Yes. Is that, did you buy it or did you buy it from your mother? I bought two, but I lost the other one. And so I've always kept just one. It looked, um, um, it looked Fellini-esque to wear one. <laughs> you look very camp to wear too, and I'm not at all camp. You're not. No. What does camp mean? Um, I don't know. I've only read about it in, in music books. papers. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were you doing before you hit the, the, the bright headlights? Um, <laughs> before before you answer that question, did yeah. you uh, have to get the gear on in order to project yourself? I mean, were you a nobody who suddenly thought, Jesus, I must get? Into, into the scene by some other way. I never asked Jesus for a thing, no, it was always on my own initiative. And <laughs> when I was 14, I, was, I, I became a mod, and it just carried on from there. I've always dressed in what I considered clothes that um, were exciting for me um, to pre prevent me becoming humdrum so that I would receive reaction from people which would encourage me to write. <sighs> I don't think I understand that. Well, um, I tried dressing um, um, pretty normally for one period, yeah. and I became very bored with myself and uh, with the kind of conversation or non-conversation I had with people. Um, and I found that the moment I shaved my eyebrows off, um, I used to receive a different kind of reaction from people. That's and, interesting. And encouraged me to develop a, an attitude of living in a world which wasn't the world I was used to. Which this isn't the world that I'm... Well, it's, now it's a world that I'm used to. I'm used to being like this. And you it's see. second nature to you now. What? It's second nature yes. to you now. Well, what was it all like before? I mean, you, at the age of 14, up to the age of 14. Well, I lived in Beckenham, and uh, I went to school there, I studied art there, mm. and I got a job as a junior visualizer in an advertising agency. Mm. And I was playing tenor sax with modern jazz bands. I was very... What kind of a home did you come from? A um, small one. Uh, kind of... It was a home. You know, just a homey home. It was nice. Lovely home. With a dog. A budgie. Did you go back there at all? Is it still there? No, it isn't. My, um, my father died and my mother moved. Um, but I see my mother. They haven't put a big notice up outside it saying, you know, one of those blue. Yeah, for sale. <laughs> 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 no, they haven't. Do the, the clothes you're trying to say, are the clothes expressed now, your own personality? And I, no, that I've never been quite clear about. I'm not, I've never been sure of my own personality. That's very refreshing. That's a very refreshing thing to hear somebody say that. Very. But can you fill us in on the barest outlines? If yes, you I can. I think, well, go on. If you're not sure <laughs> what your personality is and what's at the deep heart yeah. of it. Try and you... guide me as to what you want to know. Please. Well, you just said that you, that you think you, the clothes, you don't know whether the clothes express it or not yeah. because you don't really know what your personality is. Yeah. I find that refreshing because yes. I don't think anybody finds it off. But we all have an idea of the outline of our personality, how we would yeah. draw it in outline. Yeah. Could you draw the okay. outline? Okay, yeah. The, um, well, all right. I find that I'm a, a person who um, can um, take on the guises of, of different people that I meet. I can switch accents in, in seconds of meeting somebody and I can adopt their accent. I've always found that I collect. I'm a collector. Um, and I've always just seemed to collect personalities, um, ideas. I have a hodgepodge philosophy which really is very minimal. Um, very you believe in God, Francis. What? You believe in God? I, um, I believe in an energy form, but I'm not, I wouldn't uh, put. A, I wouldn't like to put a name to it. Do you indulge in any form of worship? Um, I life. I love life very much indeed. 
You split people down the middle, don't you, a lot? Uh, that is to say, the people are, are hostile to you, or they're in, or they're totally indifferent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what kind of what kind of reaction do you get from the people who are are violently in favour of you? I mean, do you get fan mail? Yes, a lot. What can, um, is it? Scabrous or dangerous <laughs> or interesting or exciting? It's very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> in what way? Um, well, uh, I seem to draw a lot of fantasies out of people. A lot of fan mail I get. A lot of it is awfully nice. I mean, they, they say, um, how's your baby and how's your wife and what's your mum's name and things like that. And a lot, but some of them are worth framing. Can you tell us the one or two of the framed ones? No, I couldn't really. No, they really are quite heavy. <laughs> <laughs> heavy duty letters, they are. Heavy duty. Heavy duty. Uh, du sorry, duty. Do I drop your teeth sometimes. Don't drop your teeth. Don't drop your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have. Uh, you will have obviously as many men followers as you have women. Followers. Yes. I mean, you, you haven't been shy about declaring a certain air of bisexuality. Not you? at all. I know quite a few men. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, really, it doesn't. No. Yes. yes. Why do you think? Why do you think that, that bisexuality in say seventy two, seventy three has become a common, not a common, but an accepted kind of deal? Why do you think we have moved into that era of liberal behaviour? Okay, if you talk in terms of searching for what we should be doing or how society is going, I think people are probably very infuriated with the fact that they've got to have a job or something like that, and uh, they they want a role now. Once upon a time, your father. My father, everybody's father, I presume, wanted a good job with a good income or reasonable income, some chance of promotion to um, secure their family life. Uh, with the camera, you probably find that. And that's where it ended. But now people want a role in society. They want to feel that they have a position. They want to be an individual. And I think there's a lot of searching to find the individual within oneself. Yes. But that's my answer. But how does how does that uh, that lead people into more freedom about off sexual behaviour? It means it can go anywhere and do anything. You yes, want. I think people experiment now. Yeah. Um, you have been attacked though by various uh, critics, of course, by the Americans in particular. Who oh yeah, they don't understand that as much as, as uh, we pretend we do. Yeah. Has that any of the criticism, any of the attacks, hurt you? Uh, yes, everything uh, hurts me very much. I'm very sensitive. But uh, I put myself in that position, so uh, that's what I'm in for, isn't it? Mm. Really? Have people attacked you physically ever? Um, a couple of times, yes. What happened then? I ran. <laughs> <laughs> and lived to fight another day. Yes, I did. Where did that happen? That was in America. Somebody, um, do you want to know what? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Texas, I was approached by a man who had a lorry. And in, you see, in Texas, um, a gentleman, um, has a, a rifle attached to the inside of his car if he's a farmer or something like that. And uh, somebody threatened me with his rifle, which was very, very scary, because um, he wouldn't, really didn't care very much. Uh, what did he say to you when he was threatening you? Well, it, a lot of uh, swearing went on as well. Um, if, you, if it wasn't against the law, I'd blow your head off and kind of thing. It was very, just like a film, really. Very bad film, actually. Very boring <laughs> film. <laughs> And you cleared off your own Yes, way. I did. Yeah, good for you. We, we've all read things and heard things about, about certain ladies called groupies. That's yes. They, for those who don't know, are young ladies who follow pop stars around. And, and magnificent they are as well. <laughs> they, <laughs> yes. Yeah, the bands wouldn't be able to keep going if it wasn't for groupies. They're terrific. Really? Yeah, fantastic. But they, they do to a certain extent, they are to a certain extent the vultures. Are, are, no, they're not are, vultures at all. They're, no, they're very generous. But aren't they they don't take much at all. They don't take much. No. What is their, what, how do they help the bands and groups? They sleep with the bands and groups. And uh, some of the bands could go off their heads if they weren't. I mean, I know bands who have been touring constantly for two years. They have not had any time off. Um, and some of them are not married. Mm -hmm. And they don't have wives who are going to go and see them or anything. It's a bit like being in prison. Mm -hmm. It's quite secluded, you know. It's very cocooned. And it's not at all real. Don't believe anything you read. It's not at all, none of, it, none of it's real. It's all a total fantasy. And the groupies help to, to take the, the stress off them. Yeah. Are there such things as groupie boys now? Yeah. The there are. Yeah. <laughs> and do you, have any, do you have any kind of contact with them? I've heard of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, how did they manifest themselves? How do they show themselves? They come on like uh, groupie chicks. <laughs> 
And you often find out they're boys. <laughs> oh, well, you strike me as being a, the, the kind of you, you, when you were talking about philosophy, you were talking very sensibly about philosophy. Um, do you see any any <coughs> danger in, in the kind of activity that you're indulging in, as far as the shortness of it all, as, as far as it all going to be over in a year or two years or twenty years? Um, yes, I, I, even more so now that we have um, the, a, a hit single, which is a, a thing that I've always been very scared of because I've always People have always come to see us over the last year or so and before then when I was a solo performer because I was a writer and I gave a performance of the songs. Um, we attracted an audience because we were a performing band um, and we were also an album band. And we now find we have a different kind of audience coming to see us, whom we love dearly with all our hearts. But it is worrying because it is a precarious position to be in. I think, uh, I think we'll struggle through. But how long do you give it? What, me? Yeah. How long do I give me? Yeah. I'm hoping for some kind of terminal illness that will finish it all up. But how many years do you give yourself? <laughs> I don't mean how many years to give yourself in life, but how many years can you be ahead of the glamour field and, uh, and ahead of the oh, no, no I, I've never been ahead of anything. I've been, I think, on my own. I'm not, I'm not in an Olympics. I'm a songwriter and a performer. And you have one or two insurance policies, obviously, like the fact that you are a songwriter and you can go on writing songs long after... Uh, yes, I, as long as yes, I don't break my fingers or whatever, yes, I'll be able to keep writing. Or ladder your stocking. Or ladder my stockings. They're, I know, but they're very cheap. Are they? They're very cheap, yeah, they're just all worse. And do they go as they say right up? They, they're, they're, yeah, they come up to here. But I used to have the short ones, but I couldn't find them. Angie didn't have any left, so I had to go and buy these some and where And how about the shoes? Are those men's shoes or women's shoes or bisexual shoes? They're shoe <laughs> shoes. <laughs> They're just shoes. They come from the Bowery in New York. And there's a man up there who makes them. And they're called 3D shoes. They're made out of fiberglass. What happens when you get up if you, in the morning, when you get up, do you, not feel, do you not fall off the end of the bed because you think you're higher than you are? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I don't. Silly. <laughs> Now sing and play Guitar